midst of a busy stretch, where does this tournament always rate for you, and how do you typically approach it? Yeah, I mean, um, listen, it's. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's always been grouped together as the Florida Swing, but it's more than that, right? It's kind of the one that you kind of want to peek at. Um, we always enjoy the kind of two-hour progression up the coast here, starting, you know, Honda, you know, traditionally up to Bay Hill, and then coming up here has always been such a fun way to kind of feel like you're building your game into the Florida Swing. All the golf courses are demanding in the Florida Swing, so I feel like the previous events kind of get you ready for this one a little bit, and um, this one you need to be sharp. Um, I feel like it's a golf course that tempts you all the time, um, it offers you a lot too, it offers you birdies, it offers you opportunities, but if you're not fully committed or fully on your game, um, it can definitely kind of bite. So that was my main goal today, was just to kind of come in, my approach was to be very disciplined today and not kind of give away cheap, cheap shots or kind of through a mental error make a big number. Where does it tempt you? On the approach shots or you feel like you can go at them? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think every... There's a lot of sort of risk reward holes, you know, where you have to hit the fairway at number four, and if you hit the number fairway at number four, it sets up a great birdie opportunity. Right. But if you miss the fairway at four, it really brings in five or more. So there's a lot of kind of key golf shots that need to be executed out there, I feel. And so that's kind of what I mean by sort of tempting you. And I think I feel like you know those situations. There's a bit like Augusta. There's some sideboards that if you use them, you make birdie, and if you miss them, you're really struggling to make par. So if, you know, if you're hitting key shots on the key holes at the right time, I feel like the spread between your round gets bigger. If you play great, you can shoot low, and if, you don't, if you're just off, you know, the score can kind of rack up. Justin, obviously you had some confidence in your game uh, going into Pebble. Does that win give you more confidence moving forward? Yeah, I think so. I think um, obviously the last couple of weeks have been tough, but it's obviously the win kind of gives you that little bit of ability to shake them off. Um, there's some points in the bag. There's a little less pressure and stress from that point of view. So you can just look at where you are actually with your game and the things that really matter. And yeah, I mean, um, kind of feel like it's re-energized me in terms of looking at my career in terms of decades. You know, um, definitely 30 to 40 was, you know, from 30 to 38 was kind of my my golden era, you know, that's when I did most of my damage and sort of set, set my resume up, but kind of thinking that's done now, you know, and really look at what can I do 40 to 50 and look at some other players in, in the game, um, you, know, in, you know, inspiring characters would be like Steve Stricker, you know, won seven or so times in his 40s. Um, I feel like he's a type of guy that, you know, I could use him as a pretty good role model to see, okay, all that work's done, what can I achieve from now? I don't have to achieve anything, like, you know, I've done a lot of good stuff, but I want to, and just kind of not look in the rearview mirror, but actually think, right, this is a fresh, fresh challenge now. So, yeah, that's, I think, what Pebble kind of re-energized that, that, that sort of vein of thinking, I suppose. You've been a professional for almost 25 years, so you've, you've seen it all out here. What, what's your take on the changes that were announced last Wednesday, and specifically, you know, the smaller fields and no cuts? Um, I think that it's hard to get in them, first and foremost. You know, you're going to have to play your way into them. Top 50 is hard on the PGA Tour. So I don't have a problem with no cuts because you've earned your way in there. And it's, uh, you know, if you do, the top players have always talked about wanting to play a little less and play together a little bit more. So if you do kind of have a bit of a condensed season and say you want to play 20 times, I feel like the no cut model is pretty good um, because you may be playing less tournaments total. And those weekends where you've had a sort of a slow first couple of days, but if you pile on a couple 65s on the weekend, you still have a good week. And each of those elevated events is going to count for so much that I think not giving guys that opportunity to have a big weekend is a shame um, when we're not getting together that much in, in, you know, in reality. And I think that there's no givens out here. I feel like your top fifth, like you, you, you earn your spot this year, 2023, you're in the top 50, you play next year, you have to do it all over again. And I know there's talk of 750 versus 500, but you know, I think that's a pretty de decent balance. And there's opportunity for everybody to play their way in and quite honestly yeah each and every single year you're gonna to have to earn your way so I feel like over a course of a decade if you have your card for 10 years at the moment you're gonna play 90% of the same schedule I feel like now there's gonna be pretty much guys having half the years playing a very different schedule to the other half of the years you know five years playing a great schedule five years playing a schedule they're not happy with but that's going to be, I think, what we're all facing out here. So there's nothing given with this new... It's all geared around the top players. I get that. But the top players aren't guaranteed it, you know? Top players are just best players. You've got to just earn it every year, year on year on year. 
Justin, what's it like uh, meeting your biggest fan out there, Sophie's dad, and, uh, you know, came a long way, and he's watched you since you were a young lad at, at Birkdale and everything. What was that experience like? Yeah, that was really nice to, to sort of to, to, to meet him there. And, yeah, I mean, obviously it gives you kind of, I guess, a bigger perspective of making a bogey here and a bogey there. It's not the end of the world. And, you know, my, you know he's going through some maybe tough health challenges and, uh, you know, but people who are still kind of making each day count and, and living in the moment and still getting joy out of the, the small things in life, you know. So that's whenever you have a, a meeting like that, it hits home certain things that yeah. are lessons to us all, you know. And you've known Sophie for several yeah, most, years? Yeah, yeah, years. 100%. She's been a big supporter, obviously, of our initiatives with the uh, you know, Rose Ladies series and what have you and uh, just being a big supporter of golf. And, yeah, and obviously she's a... TV celeb at home, obviously doing her stuff on Sky. So yeah, yeah, definitely been following Sophie for a while. Yeah. Cool guys. Thank you. Thank you.